distractions often make you do silly things. But distractions can also be deadly, from a car accident to a head-on train collision, and unfortunately, that was the case in the Chatsworth Division of Los Angeles, California. On September 12, 2008, Metro League Train 111 was running between Union Station in Los Angeles to Moore Park in Ventura County. The train consisted of F-59PH-855, pulling three Bombardier bi-level coaches. It departed Union Station at 3.45 p.m. with over 222 commuters on board that day with 46-year-old Robert M. Sanchez as the engineer. In the opposite direction, a Union Pacific local was traveling eastward toward Los Angeles with SD-70 Aces 8485 and 8491 pulling 17 various cars. Both trains were on the same section of track that runs between the Chatsworth Station, which is double track, through the Santa Susana Pass, which is single track. The line returns to double track again as it enters the Simi Valley. The three tunnels under the pass, however, are only wide enough to support a single track and would be very costly to widen them to consider double tracks. The single track section, though, carries over 24 passenger trains and 12 freight trains each day, so that's a total of 36 trains every day. The signals there are designed to ensure that trains wait on the double track section while a train is proceeding in the other direction on the single track. The signal system was upgraded in the 1990s to support Metrolink services, and Richard Stagner, the executive director of Metrolink in its early years from 1991 to 1998, said the system had functioned without trouble in the past. Normally, the Metrolink train would wait at the Chatsworth station for the Union Pacific local before proceeding, unless the freight train was already waiting for it at Chatsworth. However, this didn't happen. After the Metrolink departed the Chatsworth station at 4.16 p.m., it passed a red signal warning him not to proceed into the single track, and since the switch was not protected by derail or catch points, there was nothing to stop or warn the engineer of his fatal mistake. The UP was just emerging from Tunnel 28, just south of California Route 118, heading toward the switch, when all of a sudden, the UP spot the Metrolink right in front of them on their own track. They throw into emergency braking, but the Metrolink was too late. head-on at 4.22 p.m. The Metrolink locomotive telescoped backward into the first passenger car and caught fire. Back, okay, they're telling us to move back because it's possible, possible uh, fire onto the, uh, on the other train. All three locomotives, the leading Metrolink pasture car and 10 freight cars derailed, and both lead locomotives and pasture cars fell over. After the 911 calls were received, the Los Angeles Fire Department originally dispatched a single-engine company with a four-person crew for a 
possible physical rescue at a residential address near the scene. The crew arrive at the address four minutes later, just before 4.30 p.m., and access the scene by cutting through a backyard fence. Upon arrival, the captain on the scene is horrified. He immediately calls for an additional five ambulances, then 30 fire engines, and after reaching the wreck, he called for every heavy search and rescue unit the city had. Hundreds of emergency workers were eventually involved in the rescue and recovery efforts, including 250 firefighters. Two Los Angeles City firefighters received medals for risking their lives to enter a confined space with smoky and potentially toxic air without their air masks and bottles to rescue one of the freight train engineers trapped in the burning lead engine. LAPD Devonshire Division patrol officers arrived on the scene shortly after the first LAFD engine company. As firefighters were putting out the flames of the burning diesel fuel that had spilled out of both engines, patrol officers entered the damaged smoke-filled coaches to rescue and administer first aid to several passengers who were also stranded on the upper decks due to their critical injuries. Two officers received medals and two more received commendations and were credited with potentially saving the lives of several injured passengers. In total, 25 people lost their lives, including Engineer Sanchez and two victims who later died in the hospital days after the crash. This event was the deadliest railway accident in Metrolink's history and the worst in the United States since the Big Bayou wreck in 1993. One off-duty Los Angeles police officer was among the dead. One of the passengers who died was also a survivor of the 2005 Glendale train crash a few years earlier. Another had been commuting by Metrolink since its inception in 1992. Many victims were also residents of the suburban Simi Valley and Moore Park on their way home from work from Los Angeles. The four other crew members of the two trains survived. The conductor and engineer of the freight engine were trapped in their lead locomotive while it was engulfed in flames. The firefighters rescued them and found them banging on the thick windshield, unable to break it. The freight crew also had a brakeman riding in the second locomotive who was injured in the crash. 135 people also sustained injuries. Okay, who was that screaming? That's a person who was in a wheelchair who flew down the, the stairs from the top down to the bottom. So then the question remains, what could have caused this and why? An investigation revealed that the cause was the engineer was quote unquote texting while driving. The engineer was sending short messages to a young rail fan in the area while he was operating the train, which is obviously a big violation. The engineer was on a split shift that day. After taking a short nap while off duty, he started his afternoon run on train 111 at 3.03 p.m. And five minutes before departure, he used his phone to order a roast beef sandwich at a restaurant in Moore Park. The signal at Chatsworth worked as intended, going red at 4.13 p.m., three minutes before the Metrolink left the station. A little after 4.21 p.m., the engineer receives a seventh message from the rail fan. I would like that too. We already need to meet 796. That would be best. So then the engineer sends his last of five messages 22 seconds before impact, stating, Yeah, usually at North Carmillo. This was a reference to a town further down the line where the engineer expected to meet another train. Unfortunately, the NTSB did not recover the engineer's cell phone in the wreckage, but they did say that the teenagers were cooperating with the investigation. They also initially noted that there were similar rumors about an engineer using a phone from an investigation to another accident in May of the same year, when an MBTA Green Line light rail rear-ended another train in Newton, Massachusetts, where the NTSB suspected texting while driving but they found out that the actual cause was a micro-sleep episode of one of the engineers. However, with the case of Chatsworth, it was confirmed the engineer was indeed texting while driving. But then, there's a theory. 
Operating rules of trains with one engineer state that the engineer must report all signals to the conductor. This allows the conductor to pull the air or apply emergency brakes should the engineer be incapacitated for any reason. However, according to one data video, the last two signals were not reported, nor did the engineer apply brakes. Unusually, the conductor told the engineer the starting signal was green, rather than the other way around. This also led to the speculation of wrong side signal failure, where a signal would display the incorrect signal for the train. That was what caused accidents like the Clapham Junction collisions in 1988 due to faulty wiring on a newly installed signal. Some witnesses stated that the signal was green when the Metrolink left Chatsworth, and was clearly visible to display the colors correctly. However, the NTSB and a safety consultant stated that such a failure is extremely rare and unlikely, and was rejected as contrary to the evidence. In the end, the NTSB pointed the blame squarely at the Metrolink engineer. All three locomotives of both trains were damaged beyond repair and scrapped. Ten years later, it still haunts those that survived and witnessed it. It was also the deadliest accident in Metrolink's history. After the accident, HR 2095, the Rail Safety Improvement Act of 2008 was enacted by Congress and signed into law by President George W. Bush on October 16, 2008. Most notably, this bill led to the creation of positive train control, with final regulations being published on January 15, 2010. The deadline for the system was to be installed by December 15, 2015, but then, as we all know, Amtrak 188 happened in May, downtown in Philly, which revealed rail companies, including Amtrak, weren't fully on track for the deadline, so they extended it by the end of 2018 from a bill signed by Obama on October 29, 2015. Metrolink ended up being the first commuter rail network in America to have PTC fully installed, completing it by June 2015, followed by good old SEPTA on May 1, 2017, who almost made the 2015 deadline, but are now ahead of the 2018 federal deadline. With PTC implementation still a work in progress as of today, especially for Amtrak, one can only hope such an accident never happens again. Come.